<laughs> Get these cleaned up, guys, where they've been cut, all the sharpy, stabby, pointy, round off the corners. That's the first thing to do. those triangles the usual routine guys all four pieces so I don't feel so bad about using my pedestal drill now that I've recommended that you guys get that little drill press so I can go ahead now using this without any guilt whatsoever so yes guys I've got a reasonable pedestal drill press okay now obviously for something like this you need a little bit of space all right to be able to put this this wasn't an overly expensive drill press this is about uh, $400 I think this cost me. It's got multiple speeds by belt adjustment like they all do um, And it's got a uh, It's got a three-quarter horsepower motor, so it's not too bad. All right. I use a little magnetic light Okay, that I can move around it'll stick to the top of my pedestal here, which is handy I can adjust this. It's important to have good light when you're doing this. All right Just Make sure this pedestal is locked. Obviously the pedestal will go up and down on this geared system here. Okay, now, what I'm going to do now, call me Captain Paranoid, call me Mr. Anal, call me careful, call me what you will, but never trust punch marks with larger drill bits, okay? And you shouldn't do that as well. We've got to pilot this anyway. This is going to finish with a 10 millimeter diameter for all of our holes. Then we're going to pilot it with a 5 mil first and step up to the 10, just to make it a bit easier on our larger drill bits. But I'm going to dimple all of these punch marks with a 3 millimeter drill bit first, okay? So I know absolutely for sure that my 5 mil drill bit is not going to wander on the punch marks, okay? We have to get this right. We've gone to all the trouble of accurately measuring these. Let's make sure we get our holes where we've measured. So this is what I'm going to do to um, make sure that happens, and that includes plugging my drill in. And I'm just going to dimple it, okay? I'm not going to actually... going to drill right through. I'm just going to dimple all of my pieces. And then for sure guys, your next step up is not going to uh, move. Now you can see what I'm using here guys. I've got a little mini vise that goes with my pedestal. Very handy obviously in this sort of application. That, even that wants to wander sometimes off the punch mark and this is what can happen and if you uh, start a drill bit off your punch mark and you get a dimple that's it you won't be able to uh, line it up again so that's why if you use a small drill bit to get them dimpled first you'll be you'll be laughing that's what I recommend you do guys before you finish with your uh, 10 millimeter drill bit after your pilot hole of five mil. right what we're doing guys is this becomes the outside of our trolley rail. Our bearings will sit on this side, okay? Travel on our rail like this. And this will be plated, guys, with our plate that takes our connecting M12 rods. So we won't be able to access inside here. So we're gonna weld these bolts in, okay? So we're welding the bolt head, not the nut, all right? If you weld the nut, it'll be an absolute cock up. And uh, this will not uh, be a good thing, guys. So get these in and get them tightened Firm, okay. Just firm. Do one whole rail at a time. Uh, now, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to deploy our good old canola oil cooking spray. Now, hopefully, we won't get any serious cooking happening when we weld, though it's hot enough to do that. I'm going to spray this on our threads, so then we don't end up getting beading on our threads, or it's an absolute pain in the neck trying to get your nuts back off. Now this will last, guys, uh, once we do this, because now we can just uh, replace our bearings if we need to by just undoing the nut and our bearings will come off. So this will last until the Romans uh, come back again because that's what's going to happen, guys, okay? If you have never seen that movie, Idiocracy, now's the time to watch that movie uh, because I'm telling you, 20 years down the track, 
that is planet Earth. So the Romans will be back at that point in time to save us again and to make us civilized. Okay, now I don't have to clamp this because I've got a metal bench top and my earth is clamped to the bench top. You'll have to earth these guys uh, to weld this. So we're just going to do some good heavy tacks on the bolt heads on the inside of the V. All right, so let's, let's make that happen. And guys, once you've used your canola cooking spray, make sure it is way out of the pitcher. Okay, flammable gas, welding, sparks and heat, not a good combo. So once you've used this, make sure it's well and truly out of the way of your weld splatter zone or any of the heat zone, okay? Although this won't be seen, okay, we want to get that uh, flux off because that will break down the weld. And we don't want that to happen, guys. We, uh, we want these to stay in place. Now, obviously, when the nut goes on, that creates the strength anyway, right? This just stops these from turning when we do up our nuts. It's a bit warm at the moment. I should probably wait till it cools down, but the doctor being used to patience, Okay, so just get them cleaned off. And uh, that's what you're after, guys. Just some nice heavy tacks. Hoo -hoo. Some nice heavy tacks like that, okay, will be all that you require to keep them in place. And as you can see, guys, not one little bit of slag or beading uh, on our threads and literally your cooking oil evaporates because of the heat. So that's how to do it, guys. You need to do that for every piece. Okay, we're up to our next step, guys. We're going to cut our plate to uh, get our holes drilled in this to take our M12 rods that connect our trolley rail system across our mid-frame on our trolley rails to each other. Get your calipers and set them to 120 millimetres or thereabouts. One hundredth of a millimetre is okay, either side. All right, so this is what we're going to do. Now, what you're going to need, guys, is you're going to need to get yourself 1,200 millimetres, and this will give you a little bit left over. Guys, uh, mostly when I'm estimating these materials, guys, it's always to give you a little bit of stuff to play with if you make a mistake. And that's pretty much how I've done uh, this whole build. All right, I've overestimated things. If you've made a mistake, it's just going to give you um, some leeway to hopefully get you out of trouble if that happens, all right? If you don't make any mistakes, good job, and uh, you'll have surplus material for other projects, okay? So we'll look at it that way. And we're going to cut these in four lengths of 120 millimetres. Now, where I got, this was purchased from the metal shop. I got them to cut it for me this morning, guys, to that exact length. It was cut in a guillotine, so I know it's straight on the end, okay? So I can quite safely place my uh, scribe on here and get a scribe in at 120. 
I'm going to just, uh, this is what you can do, guys. Sometimes it can be hard to get a reasonable scribe in. It's good to do your measurement with this. Then what you can do is get your ruler on, hold your ruler nice and firm, and with your normal scribe, scribe in a nice hard line like that, all right? I don't know if you can see that, peeps, uh, depending on how I move the camera. Yeah, there you go. So you can see the line scribed in there, guys, between uh, between using my caliper. Now, what I do is I'll turn my ruler around so I've got this end because my metal ruler, guys, let me zoom back out again. My metal ruler uh, is zeroed right at the front. So I can use this as a scribe area. So get that right on 120. Hold the ruler firm. Scribe the end, right? Then you can get your square, which I'll remind you guys it is very hip to be. And then a nice scribe in like that. Then we'll do the same. 120. Right on the line. Take your time. We'll be doing four of the... Well, you'll do... You're doing four of these in total. We're just going to do one trolley uh, that I'm going to show you guys, all right? Uh, but you'll do this, uh, you'll do four of these, and these are for both trolleys. The trolley that we need to make for our uni joint that we'll literally be sitting on, and then one for our front motor mount bracket. Now, when I cut these, okay, I'm going to do a consistent cut. Now, admittedly, guys, I'm going to use my uh, horizontal bandsaw to do this, but you'll do the same thing. Here's a cutting disc, right? Be consistent with your cuts. What I recommend you do, right, is I recommend that when you cut these, you try and cut with your cutting disc to the outside, all right, to the outside of your measurement, not right on the line, because obviously this is a mill thick, right, so you're going to lose some of that material. So cut this side of the line, all right, and then with the next one, you'll do exactly the same. You'll cut to the left, You'll cut on the next one, to the left, right? To the left of the line, on the line, but to the left of it, vice versa. Go to it, guys, cut your four pieces, and then we're going to uh, scribe these into where our bolt locations go. So I figured I'd show this little piece of kit, guys. I bought this a couple of years ago, and it really transformed the way that I was able to work with metal, okay? And you'd be surprised. This is coming out of China. It comes from machinery, uh, what are we, machinery house, uh, here in Australia, they're, they're built in China, and it's not a bad bit of kit, guys. This will cut up to 300 millimeter pieces of uh, metal. All right, you're limited by uh, your boom here at the top. You can't really see it from where I'm shooting. Comes with a lubrication system, a pump, etc. I make my own cutting fluid just with detergent and canola oil, believe it or not. I've got linseed oil uh, in at the moment. Uh, a mix of uh, linseed oil detergent and water, all right? Very cheap to keep your reservoir filled. And uh, look, these are so quiet. They're really quiet and uh, no sparks. So I can do this even sort of getting late in the night and not disturb my neighbors when I've got all my doors closed. Uh, they're, they're pretty much set and forget it will switch off um, when it's done, it's cut, okay? So while this is cutting, you can go away and do other things. And I think this was about 700 Australian dollars. So that's a pretty good price for something like this, guys, which uh, makes your life a lot easier and a little bit healthier too. You know, you don't have the dust and the sparks uh, that you have with a grinder. And I had a chop saw for a long time that I used. That was good because I got it in square, but it was really noisy. And uh, those discs and stuff are quite expensive for those chop saws. Um, I just like everything takes a little bit of a fiddle. But once I've got this set up, because I'm doing the same as what I've told you guys to do, right? This is at the moment, this takes all different sorts of saw blades. I've got the classic hacksaw blade on this, fine tooth. Sorry, you'll only see the back of the doctor here. I'm just getting this clamp nice and tight. Uh, so I've got a traditional hacksaw blade on this at the moment. All right, and uh, but I'm setting this up like I recommended for you guys to set up to make sure that you've got 
your cutting to the, uh, if you like, to the inside of your line. Now I can set this up so then the next time I bring this through, it's exactly the same for the next one. Or thereabouts. Rightio. So this is, all you got to do guys is get the speed for these. So you never know, you guys, there might be people more interested in going on with this, okay? And if you've got the space to put something like this, it's uh, a pretty handy bit of kit. Just a matter of setting up the speed. Way too fast. Setting up the amount of fluid that you let through, I don't have it like pouring out, it recycles and drains back into the reservoir. And it's a beautiful thing. Now this may not completely cut off because of the way I've got the uh, automatic switch set up here is normally for chunkier metals. There's a little tab here that you can adjust up and down. It literally hits on the uh, on and off switch as it lowers onto it and that's what turns the, the unit off. So it may not cut all the way through on the back side here uh, before it actually switches itself off. I'll just have to basically fatigue that little bit of metal uh, to get it off and then yeah I could readjust this but uh, it cuts I don't cut black steel with this that regularly uh, it's more box and, and uh, round and stuff like that that I cut oh there you go it actually completely cut it off so that's how that works guys and then you'll just uh, now that I've got that duplicator set up I can just move it forward till it hits that and all my cuts will be the same so there you go, just out of interest guys, if you were ever interested in something like that, for around 700 Australian dollars, it's a pretty good buy. Uh, I had to build the trolley, it doesn't come with the trolley guys, okay, I needed this on wheels so I could move it around my workshop uh, to get it out of the way of stuff like my big 32 tonne press, it's also on wheels, just uh, my workshop's not huge and sometimes I need to be able to move things around uh, in order to get shit done basically. So anyway, that's my horizontal bandsaw. Oh, the other thing I will talk about with this too, guys, is it is a two-in-one bandsaw. All right. It'll lift right up like this, okay? And then there's a little uh, shelf. There's a little shelf that installs here, okay? And then you can use it like, uh, like a bandsaw bandsaw, all right? So it's a two-in-one uh, horizontal and a vertical bandsaw. And now, of course, I can't get it back down until I release that hydraulic valve a little bit there. And this is your speed adjuster here. Guys, it's just a little valve that you can uh, bring in, bring out, and that's a tap that stops it, starts it. This is the metal show here with the doctor rather than <laughs> rather than a sims show. Anyway, there we go, peaks. So do be in the habit, guys, of making sure that you have your uh, digital veneers case closed or and definitely nowhere in the vicinity when you're welding. But generally get in the habit of putting it back in the case when you're finished with it, closing it. Otherwise, you can leave it around, lying around. It'll end up getting smashed with like grinding sparks and stuff like that. And it's not a good thing. So it's a very important piece of kit. So make sure you keep it protected. Okay, with your sanding disc, guys, we'll just clean these up very lightly. We don't want to mess with our measurements.
and just do that for all four pieces. Well, that is your lot for today. So until I see you in the next tutorial, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.